story when it comes to building a business. To some, it's never an easy task to partake. And to some, they have very good stories of how they started from scratch and built their empires to profitability. And that's the reason why Bizna Kenya and MC Moments have partnered to bring you Biz Talks. Biz Talks. And here we shall be hosting mentors, people who have gone ahead of us, people who have created these empires, people who have also on the verge of creating these particular big businesses. And these lessons will be valuable for you, the business person, for you, the aspiring business person, the entrepreneur, so that at least you can make wise decisions when it comes to building that business. So every Friday at 8 a.m. on all business platforms, that's the Facebook and YouTube channel, and of course, MC Moore. Good morning and welcome to Beast Talks and I hope you're keeping well from wherever you are, keeping warm as well. We are all sporty here today and we're going to be talking matters sports, sports science and its economic value in this country. And to me, I mean, this is uh, probably a subject we need to embrace more and look at it more keenly because we never know what it can do to the economy of this country. Could it be that maybe we have sidelined it big time and we need to really look at it as a way of developing talent and embracing other means of, you know, economic income for many other youths in this country and not just youths, almost everybody. So, yeah. So with me today is a guest that, wow, my goodness, I actually had a chance to visit and see what he was doing in their academy. He's going to be telling us more on that, but first just to welcome him, Karibu Sana, Dr. Boyd. Thank you so much. Great to see you, man, looking all sporty, healthy and all that. Yes. Thank <laughs> yeah, you. You, you need to, we need to have some sessions of mentorship. Eh? Yes, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> first of all, you know, welcome to the set. Uh, yes. We, courtesy of Melvin T, we yes. have a lot of variety, as you can see, you know. Okay. And um, so I want you to make a choice. I know you peeped. Uh, I don't yeah. know what you chose to have. Yeah. Did you make a choice? Uh, I'll take the green tea. Green tea, yeah? Yes, because of it. So, you know, we have varieties yeah. of them. Is this the one with mint or just is it just plain? Right? This is just the mint. This is the oh, mint. That's, one. that's with the mint. Yeah, yeah. If you're going to have that because I want to emulate you, I'm going to have the same as well. So, uh, thank you. Do you want it with some hot water or do you want it with some milk or what would you like? With some milk, please. With some milk, please. Eh? Yes. Okay, great. So, uh, if you could flip the cup oh, okay. for me. Perfect. Yeah. So, uh, I'm just making a guess. Huh? I know you came with your son. Yeah. He came with his son. You yeah. Know, uh, did you did you uh, come running? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did. Yeah, uh, we did hey. a 20k run from home to here. <laughs> Are you for real? Though? You're no, not joking. joking. We, oh, you're we kidding. We drove, of course. <laughs> well, I can tell you this though. Yeah. This is how I dress up when I'm going for my run. Ah, okay. I just hope I have uh, I've dressed well. Yes, you've Since done you're the well. guru, man. <laughs> yes, you've done well. <laughs> You'll tell me all that. <laughs> yes. So yeah, good to have you, man, and on the show. And um, yes. I hope you're keeping warm as well, man. Because yes. uh, this is the Nairobi winter that we have here. Yeah. All right. Uh, so if you're watching us, we are talking about sports science here. And I know maybe you're asking, what's the business part of that? We're going to learn as well. I'm also sitting on the learning seat, and I'm hoping to learn as well. So let's do as we always do. Click on that share button. Let everybody else know that it's time to get to hear who is this person who would even get a PhD in sports science. What, what are they up to, you know? <laughs> that, that is an interest that I'm also looking forward to get. So welcome, uh, Boyd, again. Thank you so much. And um, let me start from this. When people ask you the question, who is Dr. Boyd, yeah. what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a tough one. Um, yeah. It depends. So most cases, I tell them I'm someone who's passionate about sports, yeah. passionate about health. Yeah. And that's how I eventually ended in this space of sports science and sports medicine. Yeah. So it's something I'm quite passionate about. I'm one of the few people yeah. who actually, my hobby, my job, yeah. and it, my passion are all in one. Because wow. uh, my hobby is, I like swimming, I like going to the gym, I like playing sports. Yeah. My job is in sports science, sports medicine. Uh -huh. And my passion is again in this, so I'm able to combine all the three in one. Okay. So I'm one of the lucky people. I don't wake hey. up uh, to go to job, <laughs> to a job. Actually, I'm excited to wake up every day. No, that's really cool. Yeah. So would you say then that maybe your upbringing and the exposures to sort of sports are the ones that inclined you to that? Yes. So uh, my parents and the school I went to, they were quite keen on sports. Yeah. Of course, by the time I was... I was supposed to actually do engineering, yeah. <laughs> but funny enough, um, 
when I emailed my parents last minute and told them I can't, I don't feel like doing engineering anymore because yeah. be, I feel like I'll be stuck for the rest of my life. Yeah. I had to write them an essay explaining <laughs> to them <laughs> what, hope, what this hobby is yeah. and how I'll make money out of it. So and I actually wrote true. them uh, uh, a script explaining to them this is what my plans are. <laughs> I don't feel like doing engineering. Mm -hmm. I plan on doing sports science and sports medicine, and these are the avenues I look at in getting revenue. Wow. Yeah. You know, that's a story of many people. You know, yeah. uh, you know parents sometimes, and I think we have grown up in those kind of directions yes. where we say there was used to be engineering, I don't know, pilot, doctor, I don't know what else, you know? Yeah. Those were the, like the careers then. Exactly. So you tell somebody you want to be a sports person, and yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you had to do an essay. I would love to see that essay. Ah, yeah. I hope I still have it somewhere. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's talk about sports science. Okay. First of all, I can get the sport, when I separate the words, I can get the sport part of it. Yeah. I can get the science part of it from my you yeah. know, real science days. Yeah. But now we're talking about a whole one combined thing about sports science. Yeah. Feels like a new phenomenon. Mm. Uh, what is it all about? Just, you know, explain to us in a one on one, what is it all about sports science? Uh, yes. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll break it down. Okay. initially. So mm -hmm. science basically looks at using research and evidence-based methodology yeah. to apply in your practice okay. and uh, using a systematic approach yeah. while doing something. Okay. Of course, that's not the Wikipedia version, yes. <laughs> but that's what I feel science is. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. what sports science is, mm -hmm. I don't want to go into the nitty gritties because it has its own branches. Yes. It's just basically Applying scientific principles, mm -hmm. research evidence-based principles okay. in sports. Okay. No guessing, no doing whatever you want. Yeah. It's, this, is, this is how it is. These are the theoretical models, or these are some of the research back models. Okay. And this is how we apply it in sports. Because okay. so the, the outcomes have already been proven, so now you're just applying that aspect. Because okay. um, in medicine, they do it. In business, they do it. They use scientific yeah, there's a lot of science, a lot of science around it. So You're why right. not sports? Sports is not just not running around anymore. So let me ask you, because I've seen this, and yeah. I also saw it in your field, yeah. you, you'll be telling us more. Yeah. Um, so we are talking about some data-driven sort of yes. decisions when it yes. comes to sports. Yes. And is it a cross all? I see that being used a lot uh, with athletes. <laughs> is it just a cross all manner of sports? Does it apply? Yes. So basically, it's a data-driven and objective approach okay. while looking at sports so we can yeah. use both numerical data okay. where you collect uh, statistics like i'm sure you've seen possession on football you've seen distance covered you've seen uh, tackles made passes made you know those kind of scientific mm. aspects uh, can be applied actually across the board to all sports mm -hmm. but i want to actually make something clear today uh, sports science yeah. is not only about just looking at the numbers and yeah. the technology and the data yeah. it's applying a scientific uh, principle okay. or scientific and systematic approach to everything you do. Okay. So even as a coach, okay. even though you're on the sideline, yeah. even minus the data, minus some of these aspects, is are you following a, a systematic? Okay. Are you following a scientific approach yeah. with your with your athletes? Okay. And then finally, now the data driven plus the technological aspects puts everything together yeah. and gives creates now a holistic view of of an athlete. Wow. Yeah. I mean, wow, I'm getting to learn. By the way, please click on that share button. We yes. want to learn everybody else. I need to give a shout out to some of the people who are watching before you know, I ask you some very heavy terminology here. Yes. K-I-N-E-S-I-O-L-G-Y. How do you pronounce that? Kinesiology. Kinesiology. You will yeah. tell me what that is okay. <laughs> in a moment. So Pauline, thanks a lot for watching. SK Beliat Hossein, thanks so much for watching. Geoffrey Alemba as well. Uh, Jeff Omoindi, let me where you're watching us from so that at least I can you know, give a shout out as well. We are learning matters, sports science, and its economic value to us. So we talked about the big term, yeah. kinesiology. W yeah. What's that, by the way? So <laughs> just basically means human movement. Anything with regards to human movement, okay. that's what kinesiology is. Oh, it's kinetic is. movement yeah, there. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when you break it down, okay. basically it's about human movement yeah. and how it can be applied in sports uh -huh. and how it can be applied in health. Okay. So basically you're looking at both sectors of health and sports. Okay. Yeah. So of course my question now behind that big term kinesiology yeah, is yeah. you know what's your key driving force to becoming a kinesiology expert yeah. and you know what has been your experience now okay so I'll, I'll take it back a few years when i was in high school i was actually in the national junior swimming team yeah so swimming was my passion actually mm. even i ended up going to south africa to train for swimming i've been to the states i've actually traveled the world a bit yeah so that 
I found so much passion and so much love from mm -hmm. just sports. Yeah. So that's where it actually started. And okay. also I used to do a lot of other uh, sports. So mm -hmm. sports has been my life since I was a child. Yeah. So that's, I ended up now eventually going into studying sports. Okay. And the reason actually uh, the driving force was because we underwent a lot of heartbreak as national, Kenya national swimming uh, members. So you're also part of the big team. Yes, I used to be in the national team from 2007 to 2011. Hey, we, we meet that part. You yeah. <laughs> That's good, man. Yes, okay. yes. Even I won two bronze medals in the All-African Games. Yeah. I've gone to World Championships. I've gone for various meets uh -huh. across okay. the world also. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so I wanted to sort of see how I can help the I, athletes. I felt like I should yeah. have clapped at that point. <laughs> no, you know, okay. age. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, so... I really wanted to see if I can make an impact in the sports setting currently because okay. a lot of our athletes are still going through the same thing. I'm sure mm. you saw what happened with uh, Yego yeah, dropping, yeah, yeah, dropping out. out. Exactly. Yeah. So it's the same thing that's recurrent. Yeah. So some of us professionals who have actually studied sports and actually looked at this as our profession, our career, our lives, mm -hmm. and we were actually athletes and we underwent that same kind of yeah. subject. Uh, we were subjected to some of those. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make a difference. Yeah. And that's actually why I came. Uh, I decided wow. to, to wow. do this. And I love what you're doing. Thank you. We so shall be much. talking about the label on your oh, yes. jersey next gen in a yes. moment. Um, so let me keep, keep talking about this, this new, uh, I'm calling it new phenomenon yes. of this scientist world. So how many sports scientists are there like in the country? Yeah. And is there a market for this kind of profession? So you would be surprised at the number of sports scientists out there. So another thing you don't know about me, I'm actually a lecturer at the university. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we needed to get this whole program, yes. go ahead. Where are you lecturing? I'm at, at the uni I'm at Kenyatta University. Okay. I'm in the exercise and sports science department. Oh. Yeah, so I lecture anatomy, physiology, and biomechanics there. You know, so I'm a bit envying you a bit because, you yeah. know, you, you're just doing what you need to do, exactly. to constantly keep yourself fit and all those exactly. kind of things. Exactly, exactly. I mean, this is lovely, you know. I, yeah. Anyway, I'm also doing what I love, but we'll talk about that later. Exactly. It's, it's exactly. more about the health <laughs> exactly. side of it. We need exactly. to look at it. Okay. Yeah. That's that's interesting that yeah. you also do that. So how many are there? You're talking about do so have many? Uh -huh. They usually graduate about forty or thirty of them each year. Okay. So looking at over a span of five years, plus some who have actually like some who have actually gone abroad to study, we're looking at actually about five hundred of us okay. currently. Okay. And you asked me if there's a market for it. Mm -hmm. Initially, when I studied sports science, I didn't know what to expect. Uh -huh. But now, I've understood the value of okay. it. Uh -huh. It's just that the Kenyan market was not yet ready, and there are a few steps I'm trying to do okay. to, to make sure it's ready. So I'll give you an example. In the sports field, yeah. it's, the market is completely ripe for professionals who mm -hmm. have studied sports yeah. science. Mm -hmm. And in the health sector, yeah. there's a sec sector called exercise physiology, or mm -hmm. even sports medicine, where we look at applying exercise, nutrition, and it, other, other aspects to yeah. treat chronic diseases mm -hmm. and people with heart conditions, people who are sick. So the market is very ripe. Yeah. Currently, it's growing. Yeah. And I'm the one who's trying to pave that way for the other people because yeah. it's still a very young field in Kenya. Okay. And I've been lucky enough to go abroad mm -hmm. and see what happens. So I'm mm -hmm. trying to open the market now for the rest of the sports scientists. Okay. You know, I, I've just remembered yesterday in the news, I watched some young man being featured. He was running, oh, yes. you know, behind some athletes. Yeah. I don't know the guys caught up that story. Yeah. And, you know, somebody said this. I just read comments. Yeah. It's not mine. Yeah. Some people say the coach was not encouraging. This a coach who was interviewed later on. Yeah. He was not encouraging. I think he should have picked the talent. Yes. And said, you know, we're doing this. Exactly. Thing. Anyway, that's another story for another day. Yes. Let's talk about how science then um, yeah. is used in sports and why should people really think critically about ensuring there's science in the sport. Because first and foremost, it takes away the guesswork. Mm -hmm. So there's objectivity. Okay. So if you ask a, a coach, how did your team do today? If you ask a, a, a local coach, how did your team perform today? Okay. They'll tell you, ah, well, if I poor sana. Mm. Or they did very well. Or yeah, yeah so to uh, yeah, very much. Yeah, to push, to push. <laughs> but now, beyond that, yeah. there's not much objectivity. Mm. So basically, I'll give you an example. Yeah. So even currently at our academy, Next Gen, which we'll even speak about later, we collect data. Okay. So I'll give you a, a sample one. Since many people know football, uh -huh. so we do tests on passing, mm -hmm. shooting, uh, dribbling, uh, how are they, uh, different metrics in terms of technical analysis. Wow. Mm -hmm. So at the end of our data collection, mm -hmm. we might actually realize for our 10 to 13 year age group, mm -hmm. 
are struggling with short passes or long passes. Okay. So how do we modify our training to make sure we are focusing on the things we are struggling with? Mm -hmm. Maybe these people are so good at shooting, so yeah. why are we always doing shooting and trainings? Maybe we can focus on something a bit more objective. Mm -hmm. So it just brings that objectivity. And during games, again, mm -hmm. you can, if someone asks you, how did this athlete perform? Yeah. You can be able to know, okay, these are the number of tackles he made. These are the number of passes he made. Yeah. This was the amount of minutes actual ball play he had yeah. and it's more objective and you're able to actually make decisions long term Lovely. and it pushes you from being that amateur level athlete yeah. to now the next level of look we know what needs to be done so it's actually it really exposes you well yeah. so you're able to tell this is the, the this is what i need to improve on as yes. a person if exactly. i'm the athlete or something exactly and even for the coach as well yeah. he's able to you know use data exactly to tell what the team needs to maybe apply more on and exactly. those kind of things exactly so you also sort of like should have trainings for coaches, do you? Yes, so education in fact is one of the most important okay. things, is uh -huh. to start that process of educating the current coaches. Yeah. And some of these things doesn't mean you have to actually go and really study sports science. Mm -hmm. You can actually, we can start these short courses and in fact that's another thing we're starting under my company Next Gen. Yeah. It's short courses. Okay. Where you teach maybe coaches about video analysis. Yeah. So how do you do video analysis? How do you collect GPS data, yeah. how do you collect, how do you do fitness tests for these athletes, mm -hmm. how do you do something called game-based training, how, so basically there's so many things you can actually, we can actually do in terms of packaging in, yeah. and that's something we're working towards to make it more accessible to the local coaches, because for them, maybe they, they didn't have the opportunities to actually go and study, yeah. so now it's how to make it available for, okay. the, for the coaches, because some of them actually really willing to learn. I've met a few of them. Mm. Even if they've not been exposed, they're like, they really want to learn some of these things. So we need to also make it accessible to them. Okay. Let's get to the government before we now look at the economy yeah. in general, how it can go. So has the government already established like policies around it or are you pushing those directions? How is the status? So with regards to the government, mm -hmm. there is actually zero policy in terms of sport. Whoa. So I've been... I've been involved um, mm -hmm. from the sidelines because, you know, sometimes with my qualifications, I end up getting sidelined because <laughs> people get... <laughs> so um, there, there are very few policies on talent development, yeah. very few policies on talent identification, yeah. very few policies on long-term athlete development, yeah. very few policies on elite sports performance. So policies... I, I don't want to speak all ill. They're, yeah. they're, they're trying. There's a positive trend. Okay. However it's baby steps and we will never be able to reach where we need to reach mm -hmm. unless we, we, we take this to the next level in terms of policy development. Okay. So currently I can tell you in terms of policy, it's almost, it's almost zero. Okay. I have tried, I have tried, I even offered my services yeah. for free wow. to Kenya Academy of Sports. Yeah. I've offered my services to, for free to the National Olympic Committee. Mm -hmm. I've offered my services for free until they stop picking my phone calls because yeah. they think I'm there to take the jobs. <laughs> But the funny thing is I don't want to be, I don't want to be an administrator. Mine yeah. is very different. Sorry. I just want to assist in policy development. And yeah. the reason I'm doing it for free is because I have my lecturing job. Yeah. I have uh, a good uh, academy running. I have a clinic that I run for injury rehabilitation and some other rehabilitation. So for yeah. me, I want to give back. Okay. And it has been a bit of a struggle because mm -hmm. the administrators feel a bit threatened. Yeah. And there's... I'm actually no threat can, to can them. Can I ask you a question? This yeah. is this I had not prepared you for this yeah. at all. How many doctors do we have in uh, sports science? So at KU, uh -huh. we're probably about four or five of us. Okay. In a specific four. I see why you would be yeah. a threat if you come to yeah. my place. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So there are quite a number of them. Okay. Even one of them being Professor Boyd, who is not my relative, but oh. Oh. <laughs> he is he is now the pioneer of this field and it's wow. actually the one who started this in in kenya wow he, he won i think a bronze or a gold medal in the olympics or world championships Whoa. back in the day okay. so he is one of the people who we feel okay. has pioneered this this field so oh, oh, this is very interesting you know and you know i just wanted to get a bit practical with yes you. cs amina is watching yes what would you tell her now so I would first and foremost tell her mm -hmm. that she needs to include 
competent professionals yeah. in some of these organizations, mm -hmm. even if it's on a consultation basis or whatever it is. So the first thing is that. Yeah. Second and most, in fact, this is the most important thing. Yeah. They need to create policies. Mm -hmm. Because for this to be sustainable, yeah. there needs to be policies that dictate the way mm -hmm. in which sport is run, mm -hmm. all the way from the four-year-olds, yeah. all the way up to the time they're elite. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to say that the education ministry has tried with the new PE, PE uh, curriculum, okay. and I really, actually, that's one of the biggest things I must commend okay. them on. Mm -hmm. However, the policies are not yet there. Yeah. The way in which they select the people mm -hmm. within... Uh, I normally some I normally see some of these committees that are normally formed. Yeah. I look at the committees and they're not well constituted. Mm -hmm. The people are not. Some of them are not competent. Some yeah. of them are just there to fill space. Yeah. So let's treat sports with. Uh, if it's the Ministry of Health, it'll be constituted by doctors. Mm -hmm. Now the Ministry of Sports, when it comes to some of these policy development, they need to constitute professionals like us. Yeah. And also not uh, push us away. Okay. And I don't want to be a bit uh, confrontational here, but mm -hmm. if she's watching also, yeah. um, I had actually gone and seen her some time back and actually pitched some of a few of these uh, policies okay. to her. Okay. I know she's a very busy woman and she's been doing a lot of great work. Absolutely. But a year, two years down the line, mm -hmm. my proposal has been sidelined. Mm -hmm. Kenya Academy of Sports gave them a very good proposal on ta talent identification and talent development, sidelined. National Olympic Committee I gave them a, a policy document on, a, 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 a brief proposal on how they can uh, develop talent yeah. into the Olympics, yeah. sidelined. They don't pick my calls. So I just said, you know what, that's actually comes to why I started this. Why is that? I love this. Yeah. You're a solution, solution yeah. driver. You know what? You don't pick this. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to tweet our way and Ex start on. You can catch up with us. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, I love that. I love that. Yeah. Be before I jump into the, you know, next year, now that we have already introduced that, mm. um, I, I actually wanted to, to, to see, because there's somebody who uh, has uh, sent in, uh, um, well, so many of that these yeah, okay. comments these all these let me let me just give a shout out please uh, yes. to some people no problem uh samuel interesting topic absolutely i told you samuel uh, does very nice peanut butter i think it's very good for athletes you know uh, okay yes so he, he was here he does amazing stuff here ah, nice. with sesame i remember that with sesame for energy yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just give a shout out to him um mandy mutebi great work dr boyd watching from nairobi asante sana uh, Angari, good morning, my name is Dr. Boyd, looking sport. Yeah, we are looking sport, exactly. no jokes. <laughs> uh, we want to know what is hindering the perfect execution or incorporation of sports science in the country's sports sector? Oh, questions are already coming in. Let's, I'd love let's to answer that. that. You, you'd love to answer that? Please yes. do. What's hindering then? Um, again, at the administrative level, mm -hmm. a lot of the administrators have blocked a lot of the development in sports because they feel it's a threat. You know, anything new yeah. that comes into, into an institution is seen as a threat. Yeah. However, they forget that this is a completely new subsector that yeah. can be added on mm -hmm. to whatever they're currently doing. Yeah. I was happy, okay, as I said, I don't want to always speak ill. Sometimes it's good to speak positively. Like the National Olympic Committee for the first time yeah. was able to have a sports scientist on the team, mm -hmm. which is phenomenal. Absolutely. But honestly, they, we, we are seen as a threat uh -huh. to, the, to the people who are currently in sports because yeah. they feel that we are there to take their jobs. But mm -hmm. no, we are there to add a layering yeah. Yeah. to it. <laughs> we are not a threat, is it? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, somebody else is asking this question. Great stuff, Dr. Edwin. Keep boet. Yeah, people already can. Yes, at least they can get my name. That's Eli Tyra. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot for watching. Samuel is saying this. Some guy over my peanut guy. Yeah. I would like to partner with him on the nutrition part with my peanut butter varieties. Can I get his contacts, please? Yeah, we'll talk later on. I'll send you my contacts. He's open for all those, those yeah. kind of things. I can tell he's an amazing guy for this. Yeah. Um, Melostella tuned in. Thank you so much. Emmanuel Brown. Actually, Molimu, you are a threat. Hey, hey, hey. That's maybe a student. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, then there's uh, Nick Mwangi. Good show. We are learning. Absolutely. Perfect. Now, I, I want to play a video okay the next gen video yes uh so that guys can be able to see and get to know uh, yes. what this you know what next gen is all about yes i know i have watched that video yes. maybe i was part and parcel of it somehow yes. you know uh <laughs> let's see it i want you to look at it and then we get into the questions on next gen okay let's go ahead
All right, there you have it. Uh, an amazing concept here. I'm seeing kids really, you know, yeah. doing amazing stuff there. Some amazing coaches there. Yes. Good stuff. I don't know. So let us know. Tell us about the Next Gen Academy. Okay, yeah. so yeah. I'll, I'll start again, mm -hmm. step back in yeah. terms of why I started Next Gen. Yeah. So I, was, I used to work with the Kenya Rugby Union. Yeah. I used to do statistics and analysis for them. Yeah. So actually I went six months without being paid. I went 12 months and currently the debt is up to even up to plus a million <laughs> that they owe me. <laughs> so hey, that's I, good money, man. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. So I tried yeah. with the Kenya Rugby Union. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I tried with various organizations. I tried with the National Olympic Committee. I tried with the Kenya Academy of Sports. You know, I said, I've learned all these things. Yeah. So how do I give back and how do I make a change? Yeah. But every door shut in my face. So that's why I decided, let me do this. Let me go completely private. Yeah. Let me start my own company. Mm -hmm. Let me do it right. Yeah. And the only way I can do it right is by starting off with the kids. Absolutely. Because talent starts so with the four-year-olds, the five-year-old kids. You're right, you're right. So that's how I actually started Next Gen uh, Multi Sport yeah. Academy. Yeah. And I'll give you the four pillars okay. of basically what Next Gen is. Yeah. First of all, mm -hmm. it's a multi sport academy, okay. which is not unlike others, others in Kenya, where it's maybe football, it's maybe basketball, it's only swimming only. Mm -hmm. And I'll explain to you the concept. Okay. So okay, yes. Yeah, so we have football, basketball, rugby, swimming, athletics, and tennis. Yeah. And the reason we started it was because I'd done some research over time when I was doing my master's, still doing my PhD uh, research. Uh, I, was, I was just looking at how do we develop talent. Mm -hmm. And I came across very interesting models that they're using, like in the States, mm -hmm. in Australia, New Zealand. It's called the Long-Term Athlete Development Program. Mm -hmm. And this one looks at exposing kids to a variety of sports when they're young. Because okay. like you, if you're, if you're four years and you're put in football, how mm -hmm. do you know that's where your talent lies? Yeah, how do ha I know? Exactly. In fact, we will have a personal talk because, yes. man, <laughs> my, my legs, man, <laughs> they, they won't do it. But they won't. <laughs> <laughs> you kick the ball that side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, do um, you know about the 10,000 hour rule? Yeah, I've heard about it. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Like, you practice something like 10,000 times, you'll be super in it. Exactly. Yeah. So, there's a slight there flow uh -huh. to, to that 10,000 hour rule. There's yeah. something called this plus or minus. 5,000. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? So we, we, we can be the two of us here. Yes. So let's say we are doing, uh, let me give a sport, for example, maybe football. Yeah. We have the same coaches, we have the same nutrition, we have the same everything. Mm -hmm. It might take me 5,000 hours to become an expert. Yeah. It might take you mm -hmm. 10,000 hours to become an expert. Mm -hmm. And it might take someone else who might never ever become an expert, even though they train <laughs> day in, day out. <laughs> So I'm not saying hard work doesn't pay. Hard work pays. pays. But yeah. basically being able to put these people in a multi-sport environment when they're yeah. young yeah. allows them to be placed or into the sports that they show the most promise in. Yeah. So instead of having to work very hard with them, mm -hmm. by the time you're placing them in this sport, it's easier for them to grasp a lot of these uh, concepts. Okay. So talent development becomes a lot easier. Yeah. So us, like at our academy, we collect a lot of data. Mm -hmm. So every quarter we collect data on physical performance. Yeah. We collect data on technical performance. Mm -hmm. And by the time they're 10 years, we normally provide this data to their parents or yeah. to their guardians to uh -huh. tell them, look, we believe these kids should be in sport X. Yeah. Or why? Yeah. So that's the first pillar, okay. multi-sport. Multi Second pillar is scientific. Mm -hmm. I have drafted a curriculum mm -hmm. that is based on age and development. Oh. Yeah. So okay. it's in the same way in school. There's a curriculum. My academy also has a curriculum mm -hmm. where we look at implementing specific things at different times when yeah. they're developing, mm -hmm. age specific. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's research based, some of it. Yeah. Some of it is based on anecdotal evidence, which mm -hmm. is still uh, scientific. Yeah. So we're looking at that. Okay. The third thing is character development. Mm -hmm. You know, sports can build character. Yeah. So that's another thing we're really focusing on is on building a lot of character for the Okay. And finally, it's a holistic program. So we look at building a whole, a child as a whole. Okay. So even sometimes when they come in the first month, I mean the first term after when school's starting, mm -hmm. we normally have a value system. So we'll tell them the importance of school. So yeah. you see, it's teaching them to be people also. Mm -hmm. People first, then sportsmen second. Wow. Yeah. wow. Goodness. I love it. I love yeah. it. I, I have so many questions I could ask, but at least I saw it practically and yes. you dealing with these kids. Yeah. But I can't, this question can't exit my yes. head. Is sports genetic in some, in some way? I'm, I'm just wondering because some, some guys, I'm, let me give myself as an example. Yeah. 
in my primary school, yeah. the only sport that we played a lot there was just football. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you know, I had to take the goalkeeper aside because, you know, yeah. if I get on the field, man, I, I'm going to mess them up. Exactly. <laughs> is, it, is it genetic, you know, or, or, or it can be learned, as you said? So, in fact, that's the, the biggest thing I'm grasping with currently. And in fact, I'm doing a lot of research in that area okay. of talent development. Yeah. Because is it... So that's the question. Are athletes made or are they born or are they made? Are they made, yeah. That's the question. <laughs> and I'm telling you it's 50-50. Uh -huh. First and foremost, yeah. we have specific genetic characteristics yeah. that make us prone or better yeah. in specific sports. Yeah. So yes, there's a genetic component. Yeah. And then secondly, yes, you can actually be able to transform someone yeah. to become a specific athlete. Yeah. However, there's a balance. Yeah. The more physically demanding the sport is, athletic swimming, mm -hmm. the more genetic predisposed you are oh. to that. The more technical it is, yeah. the more it depends on your, on your intellectual, intellectual capacity, capacity. Your, 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 your processing of your brain. And that mm -hmm. is also genetic, you know that. Yeah. So the way in which you process information is also genetic. Okay. So it <laughs> depends. They, it varies from the two. Yeah. And that's now how you can marry the two together and come up with a holistic athlete. Let me ask you, because it might help me yeah. and help somebody else. Yes. Just one sport, yeah. one that is more physical intensive, that's what yeah. you said, yes. and one that is more on the mind. Yeah. So, like, which one? Give me an example of one sport that is more mind-based. Tennis, maybe. Or oh, tennis, tennis eh? Yeah. Ah, yeah. So, yeah. tennis is, is all about just it's jumping. It's not about jumping and running. It's, <laughs> it's very cognitive. Of course, the physical one is like athletics. Athletics, yes. Okay. Eh! Yeah. So I feel like I'm more sport in the mind, but we'll talk about <laughs> that. <laughs> okay, and I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. I think that's what differentiates you from other academies in the country there. Exactly. Because it's not just about a place where you just go and we're just doing guesswork. Exactly. It's really based on scientific checks on the people that you have and all that. Exactly. Lovely. We need yes. to have you yeah. in every county and everywhere here exactly. doing all that. In that's fact, county governments should embrace that because they exactly. have sports departments. You exactly. Know? Are you, uh, is there any county that I've talked to you or about this? Okay, or? so, so I'll, I'll give you an example. So we, when it comes to the government, I've tried all I can in terms yeah. of helping. Yeah. I've decided, let me go private. Let me see how I can impact. Okay. I can impact children. Mm -hmm. Let me see how I can impact the country yeah. from a private perspective. Like mm -hmm. currently, we even have scholarship. My academy is made up of almost 40% scholarship yeah. kids yeah. who we got from the neighboring uh, yeah. a surrounding area. Yeah. So how do we make, how, so you know, you can make a change from inside out, Absolutely. but how do we make a change from outside in? Okay. And that's what I'm trying to do. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Let's talk about your future, you yeah. know, uh, the next gen multi sports academy. Yeah. What do you envision? So um, my vision for it is we're going to eventually become a full high performance center. Okay. So by high performance center, I mean, we'll have the academy yeah. where kids live uh -huh. or board train and stay there full-time so they also become full-time athletes the academics will also be tailor-made to that wow. so kids will only be going to school four to six hours mm -hmm. and now even i've been doing a lot of research in terms of pedagogy or education yeah and we don't need kids to be learning the whole day mm -hmm. four hours is adequate enough for them to cover enough content yeah and for the rest of the day they play sports and for those who are maybe talently inclined in something else, we maybe have some, ex have some after school activities for them, music, ETC, because we yeah. know that also builds the brain, builds You're creativity. Right. You're right. And then we're going to have our professional teams. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have next gen in football, basketball, rugby, swimming across the board, mm -hmm. but are going to be competing locally and internationally. Wow. And then finally, we're going to have a health and wellness center. For, yeah. So people who want to get healthy and fit, people who are sick, People who have undergone heart surgery, have lung disease, have yeah. a place to come and recover and recuperate. Okay. Let me just throw random things person through my head yeah. now. Because let's use the example. The rugby team, there's a team, it's about maybe 20, 30 guys, yeah. you know, or there's the, uh, the racing team that will yes. go to the Olympics. Yes. It's about maybe a crew of about 50. But we're talking millions here in the country, yes, all right? exactly. My question is this. Um, it's a, like a two-part question. Mm -hmm. Do you, from where you sit, believe that if we focus, because that's what you're doing in your academy, if we focus on just developing the talents yeah. of young people, yeah. this can even be their careers. And then, so that's part one of the question. Yes. Part two is, is it economically viable? Yeah. Because uh, you know, someone may say, you know, how much does, uh, I don't know, mm -hmm. what would you make, you know, my football team's in the yeah. ground there. Yes. You know, guys have to do side hassles, yes. you know. Yes. That's like the hobby thing and all those kind of yeah. things. Is, is it a viable profession? Do you, and do you believe 
maybe it's the time or maybe it's in the future yeah. where this can be something that even as parents sitting back, we can be like, my child, it's, it's going to be a football. Sports, yeah. yeah. So the first part, mm -hmm. if you look at the athletes in E10, and I'm going to use them as an example, yeah. those people have money beyond what you can expect, the ones who have been able to make it. So, to them, yeah. so there's already a test case to show us you can be one of the richest people in Kenya through sports. Through sports. So yeah. it's just that the fact that mm -hmm. sports has been mismanaged, so it's not been able to cut yeah. across the board. Mm -hmm. In athletics, it's an individual sport. Yeah. It's an individual effort. Yeah. So that's why they're able to thrive, even though mm -hmm. the organizers or the yeah. organization governing them mm -hmm. is not as organized. Yeah. So the rest of the sports, the more technical the sport, the more we struggle in Kenya. Okay. So the other sports have not yet been able to follow. Okay. But I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. The rugby players, uh, the Kenya 7 rugby players, yeah. before, of course, the mismanagement happened, yeah. were earning quite a good salary. Yeah. Salaries that managers would be making in specific uh, wow. organizations. That's very good. So there's already a test case for it. Okay. Given that... It's being mismanaged. Now imagine if it's managed properly. Wow. wow. Secondly, mm -hmm. is it eco economically viable? Mm -hmm. The test case is, if you look at the, the amount of revenue that's generated in terms of GDP in the States, in the UK, the amount of jobs that have just been created purely from sports, mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's the ridiculous. richest people in those countries are sportsmen and musicians. Yeah, you're right. You hear these NBA fellas. Exactly. And, oh, goodness. Yeah. Exactly. So mm -hmm. even in the Division Three leagues, yeah. or even four, yeah. those guys are living still semi-lavish lives. Mm -hmm. So I don't really need to reinvent the wheel and tell people that it's viable. Okay. Economically, we know it can create so many job opportunities for Kenyans. Currently, yeah. I know most of my friends or colleagues are becoming unemployed because of COVID and because of the current economic status. Yeah. People don't know what to do, yeah. but sports might be the solution yeah. to solve part, of course it can't solve all of the problem, okay. part of the economic crisis. All righty. Yeah. I love that because honestly, right now we are talking about unemployment. Mm. And I think it's a system as well. The system has put us, I, I, let me use my practical example. Yeah. We were put in a place where it's books and you're doing good if you're number one yeah. there, somewhere there. Yeah. And if you get a D or yeah. some E there, it's exactly. like you're damned for good. Exactly. And yet there, there could be all this Something other else. spectrum that we have not explored. Exactly. But we are now saying with next gen, when you get in there, yes. it will all be explored out, it is it? It will all be explored. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Exactly. You're really solving a, solving a big problem that exactly. we have. Um, so I'm going to ask you because now you're in business. The yes. fact that you have the academy, you're in business. Exactly. Maybe the most fair question would be how is business? But first, yeah. we just we're still in the in the in, in the pandemic. You yes. Know. How are you doing, and how were you affected by this pandemic? Since you just started up, mm. and then the pandemic hits you, how, how has it been? So the two questions. The yeah. first part is how is business? Yes. How is business? Just like any other business, we're only uh, about a year old. Yeah. So we we are learning as we go. Yeah. We are getting to know what how the sports that uh, sports field is looking like. Yeah. However, we know something mm -hmm. that other people struggle to know in the sports field. Yeah. It takes time. We don't look at these quick returns. Because, you know, a lot of people in sports would be, yeah. how can I make as much money yeah. or exploit these athletes as quickly as possible? Mm -hmm. So that's why we see all these scandals in sports. Yeah. You get an athlete, try to exploit them as quickly as possible and done. Mm -hmm. However, we know it takes time. Yeah. So for us, we, we are going to build the mm. next generation yeah. of athletes in Kenya. Wow. And from, so initially I know we are going to, the, the revenue generation will be gradual yeah. as we start developing talent, which takes time. Very and true. we are ready to go for the long haul. Yeah. And we know in a few years to come, we'll be able to show people, look, all you need to do is focus on talent development, mm -hmm. manage the athletes effectively, yeah. be ethical, mm -hmm. and you'll be able to, the money will come. Wow. If I have an athlete going to the Olympics, yeah. going for world championships, yeah. I'll have money in my pocket until my Absolutely. trousers are falling. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So focus on the talent development. Second, yeah. mm -hmm. with the COVID pandemic, it has really affected us just like any other business. We are yeah. not unique. Yeah. So we have struggled with numbers. The first lockdown, we had about 120 kids dropped to 60. Whoa. Second lockdown, parents disappeared. They didn't come back. So it has been... A tough journey. I know. Just like any other business. Just like any other business. But for us, yeah. we, we're focusing on the kids and focusing on the development. Okay. When I look at your name there, Next Gen, there's yes. a wellness part of it. Yes. Because you call it also a wellness center. Yeah. 
let me get to that a bit uh, yeah. because I don't know whether I'm well. You'll tell me later. Yes. But <laughs> <laughs> so what's that component of the wellness? Because I know sports as well yeah. has a component of your health, yeah. is it? Yeah. But please ex expand because you're the expert here. Yes. yes. So mm. as I explained, the, the spectrum is the, 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 the course or whatever we study is called exercise in sports science or exercise in sports medicine. Yeah. So there's the sports component and the health component. Okay. Sports people are make up less than 1% of the population in Kenya. Absolutely. However, from what us guys have studied, yeah. we can be able to impact health, the health sector. So I'll give you an example yeah. before I, I go to the clinic we opened. Yeah. As an exercise and sports physiologist, mm -hmm. you can be able to help people with diabetes, hypertension, osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, all these conditions. All these diseases, they are so and as much as people think you cannot cure them, I'm not saying you can cure them, yeah. you can be able to manage them. Through sports. Through physical activity, through structured yes. and a scientific evidence, wow. and even reverse, actually let me say reverse some yeah. of these conditions. You might have hypertension taking 10 medications. Yeah. After working through a systematic clinical approach in exercise, you mm -hmm. can be able to actually bring your blood pressure down. Wow. If you've come from a heart, heart attack, you can be able to get your heart function yeah. back to normal. Wow. If you're obese, you can be able to, so it can be able to, uh, so the, the, the NCDs or non-communicable diseases, yeah. the, the pandemic, it's a pandemic. It's even worse than COVID. Yeah. So but that's true because yeah. I see even in the US, they're struggling with uh, exactly. some obese guys and all those kind of things, you know, and now it's no longer there. Exactly. Even here. Exactly. I, I, and I'm not just trying to say something, man, the, they, there are so many yeah. Fast foods that are coming in exactly. that I've seen that have affected those countries exactly. and guys, you exactly. know, quick fixes, you know. Exactly. So, like for us on our end, yeah. what we have studied yeah. can single-handedly eradicate non-communicable diseases. Wow. Of course, there's to some extent, because of course some of them are due to secondary conditions. Okay. But we can almost single-handedly eradicate uh, non-communicable diseases through preventative medicine. So let me ask you. Because at Next Gen, you told me you, you started off with kids and all yes. that. Yes. So I am, I am 49, yes. assuming. Yeah. My goodness, my health is somehow, whatever, I'm yeah. trying to, but am I allowed to come and consult at a clinic? So we opened up uh, a clinic called Next Gen Health and Wellness. Okay. We have, luckily now we have two locations, one in Lavington and one in Parklands. Yeah. So basically, it's a 360 shop for health. Yeah. So we offer all matters health. Okay. From injury rehabilitation and physiotherapy yes. to cardiac rehabilitation okay. to pulmonary rehabilitation okay. to postnatal and prenatal to so people who are expectant. We have yeah. health programs for them. Oh. We have chronic disease management yeah. where we try and manage and reverse some health conditions. Okay. We have the geriatric population, mm -hmm. the older people who mm -hmm. can come. Yeah. We have uh, um, so mental wellness because yeah. did, did you know that depression can actually be managed through a structured exercise program. <laughs> that's new. Because there's something that's that, there's some medication that is, that's normally used to treat depression called mm -hmm. SSRIs. Okay. So serotonin reuptic inhibitors. So basically what that does, mm -hmm. it, 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 it helps, well. yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. So it normally helps managing uh, de mood, depression, depression and mood. Wow. But exercise yeah. has actually been shown to be as effective or even more effective than those medications. Yeah. So instead of locking up people who are depressed somewhere, get them to exercise in get a structured out. manner and mm -hmm. they will never have to take medication again. Wow. And then finally, we are partnering with a company for genetic testing for health. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So wow. basically, <laughs> this anyone, is, anyone this is can huge. come. So, you know, we talked about the economic value, yeah. uh, definitely. I can really see it. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you can paint that picture out. Yes, yes. About the economic value of overcoming these chronic diseases because governments are spending lots of money as well, is it? Mm. What, what do you see? What do you see? Out so, there? governments and ins insurance companies are going bankrupt because people are too sick. Wow. So, the num number of non communicable diseases are skyrocketing, skyrocketing. People with hypertension, diabetes. Yeah. It's, and do you know a lot of these people, medication for diabetes or hypertension can cost you even up to 10,000 a month. Absolutely. And these are people who are struggling to even get by each month. Yeah. And if you can focus on preventative health yeah. or mm -hmm. managing chronic conditions mm -hmm. through a physical lifestyle, through healthy nutrition, mm -hmm. through specific exercise and sports medicine principles, mm -hmm. we can reduce the burden yeah. of chronic diseases. Mm -hmm. So the only people who are going to hospital are people who are 
God forbid, been in an accident. Yeah. People who get mal uh, malaria or specific communicable diseases, you know, the different uh, COVID, mm -hmm. the infections. In fact, doctors yeah. should be dealing with those kind of things. Wow. Non-communicable diseases should not be there to start with. And there are families that have gone bankrupt because people of People go things. bankrupt. I, I normally see people even going to the, they normally go to the hospital. They, have, they don't even have money to pay for the medication. Yeah. And it's, it's and, and exercise is free. Okay. I'm okay. So okay, that's a two part one we can, we can look at. But if we can come up with community based yeah. physical activity programs like in Rwanda and specific other countries yeah. where you're told, guys, exercise today or, you know, those yeah. kind of programs that are implemented in the country, you're right. telling people take the stairs, walk, create paved roads for cyclists where they don't interact with other people and you'd solve a complete pandemic. You guys should be seated advising the budget of this country <laughs> and all those kind of things. Yes. Let me ask though. Yes. I don't know, has the Ministry of Health in a way put such or embraced certain programs to enlighten people about, you know, you can avoid these things early enough and stuff? Have you come across such initiatives? Uh, minimally. So it's something okay. that's actually, so for them it's more about mm -hmm. cure rather than prevention. Yeah. But yes, there is some interest in that area and it's good. You know, at yeah. least when you see the ministry taking a bit of an interest in that, it's good. Yeah. However, as I said, it takes more than that. Wow. So again, policies, as we were saying, mm -hmm. there needs to be a policy that's developed yeah. on preventative medicine or preventative health. Yeah. And it's something I'm sure the ministry should be able to start yeah. and incorporate specialists yeah. who can be able to advise them ad adequately. Yeah. Not, u not the usual come up with a committee and you're wondering who this committee is made up of. Mm. So even constituting the committee that actually makes decisions needs also to be made a bit more critically. Wow. Can I, can I just get into uh, some of the comments okay, here? Okay, no problem. Um, Jew Leonard saying that, Good morning, Dr. Boyet and Maina. My child is a beneficiary of your great dream. Keep going. Thank you. There's, a, there's somebody who has been benefiting there. Yes. Geoffrey Alemba, it's to expose kids in sports when they are young. How I wish my parents exposed me early. <laughs> it's never too late, right? It's never too late. Come, we might have some <laughs> programs for, for grown-ups. <laughs> wow. Hi, man. I agree with Dr. Boyd. I tried to work as SNC with two rugby clubs, and the coaches saw me as a threat. The athletes loved it. I don't know how much... I think I don't know how I was chased. I think maybe he's saying you don't know how I was chased. <laughs> yeah. So I think I don't know. Yeah. Goodness, we need to learn how to collaborate exactly. to make things better, isn't it? Because I give you an example mm -hmm. before you uh, read the next comment. Yeah. There's science on this end. Yeah. And there's coaches' intuition on this end. Yeah. I have never said that science beats intuition or coaches' knowledge or coaches' experience. Absolutely. What I believe is a combination. Yeah. Of science. Yeah. Coaches' intuition and coaches' experience mm. comes together to create something very holistic. Yeah. So coaches should not see science as a threat. Yeah. They should see it complementary. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Sorry about the comments. You can continue. No, no, it's yeah. okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's all right. This is part of it. Yeah. Uh, Mark is in the house. Thanks a lot. That's my good buddy. Ah, okay. Uh, he's already watching out. Uh, oh, someone, someone has been touched today. He's saying what? Um, the problem with our institutions and leaders is new ideas and ways of doing things as a threat yes exactly. <laughs> i think he's just trying to echo more so keep them coming and let me know where you're watching us from you know time is actually flying yes eh? let, me, let me just see what we can look up now let's talk about your academy and what you're doing of course we've talked about the COVID challenge yes. and all that are there any other challenges that you're facing uh, just okay. as a business person now so currently we are the biggest challenge we're facing is with the sports act okay so the it? sports act mm -hmm. As basically, if you read it, states yeah. that private business owners like us cannot own academies, oh. which is completely unconstitutional. Yeah. So they Why have not? stated that they have. So they have stated we have to register as clubs. Yeah. And secondly, we need to uh, have a board, of which they have to be uh, managed or have someone from some of the specific uh, FKF. Kenya yeah. Swimming Federation, Kenya Ooh. Tennis. So basically we lose control of our businesses. And I've never had that happen in any other industry yeah. where as an individual, you're not allowed to own your own private business. Yeah. So we have been trying to see how do we register yeah. and still be within, because we want to be compliant with the law. Absolutely. We never want to be outside the law. Yeah. But the law is making it impossible for us to become compliant. <sighs> so that's been our biggest headache. Yeah. We... Across the board, all academies are having the same problem. Yeah. 
and you're a Kenyan, so you know how the, the policy development uh, so we, happens. We need the legislators to get in there and exactly. amend it, is it? Because even the, the Sports Act, yeah. again, who, who constituted the board of the people who came up with the Sports Act? Again, it was not well constituted, or mm -hmm. if not, it was constituted with maybe friends or people who knew each other and wanted a specific agenda. Yeah. So it leaves us, we can't develop sports. They're saying the only true academy is the Kenya Academy of Sports. So basically mm. they're saying we can't own academies, which is not yeah. constitutional. You're right. So let me ask this. There's another question, quite yeah. a loaded one that I'll ask yes. uh, later on. Um, let's talk still about your academy. Yeah. I saw kids there. Yes. We have just seen a very nice video. Yeah. And I hope we'll even end with that video. Mm. Um, what ages do you admit? So uh, the plan is to admit all under 18s. Okay. However, we decided to start with the slightly younger ones. Yeah. So we started with the under 13s okay. because I wanted to instill specific values and yeah. specific characteristics in these children when they're young. Yeah. So it doesn't mean I've forgotten the 13 and over. Okay. It's just that I want to grow with a younger bunch. Yeah, absolutely. And then grow with them slowly as we go. So this younger bunch, because I'm asking for, yeah. for, for someone who, yeah, has, a, okay. who has a two-year-old. Ah, okay. Is a two-year-old allowed to come? So currently <laughs> we're, we're doing until four years. <laughs> But okay. we are starting a small daycare sort of okay. fun place where kids can come and be active yeah. and play who are under four years. So come September, we'll, we'll have a program for the two-year-olds. Okay. Are you partnering with schools, maybe? In fact, yes. If there's so, someone who's watching, maybe, and uh, they're wondering, maybe my school may need you. Yes. So we are partnering with schools. So mm -hmm. what the policy is, schools who are struggling with their sporting programs, yeah. we are coming to actually revamp your entire sports program. Yeah. We work together with whoever, whichever coaches you already currently have. Yeah. And also the parents have an option of integrating the academy yeah. into the schools. Mm -hmm. I'm currently in talk with, talks with three schools. Yeah. Um, and they seem quite keen. Mm -hmm. So in fact, I would love to do it across the board yeah. and eventually mm -hmm. try and implement some of this in the public schools because right. I would love to get involved in, in helping sports across the board in Kenya. Absolutely. Listen to this loaded question. If yes. we include sports science in our everyday sports, yeah. what is the lo longevity yeah. of our athletes to provide income for themselves and boost the economy? So for those who follow sports, you'd notice our athletes in Kenya, yeah. our athletes are getting injured 24-7. Yeah, absolutely. Sports science mm -hmm. actually allows people to have careers longer than you can ever expect. LeBron James, Westbrook, uh, Ronaldo, Messi. These yeah. are people who have applied sports science mm -hmm. to be part of their lives. Mm -hmm. And these people are going to play until they're 40 years old. Mm. And it will allow someone to have, a, you know, a long time you're being told, you need to read so that... By 30, when your career is over, you have yeah. something to fall back. Mm -hmm. Of course, I encourage all my athletes. Yeah. They have to get maybe a degree or at least study. However, you, sports science, we normally look at something called load management. Mm -hmm. So we make sure athletes do not get overloaded. Yeah. And if they get injured, how do we rehabilitate them mm -hmm. effectively? Wow. So we can be able to make sure people play until they're 45, yeah. some of them. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Another question here. Um, what has been your most satisfying moment in your sports science career? <laughs> <laughs> of course, we have had yeah. some frustrating moments here and there. So but honestly, some exciting time. Yes. starting next gen was the best and most relieving time for me because mm -hmm. I have full control. Yeah. Uh, prior, when I was trying working with organizations and institutions, I was really pushed down. My ideas were rubbished and yeah. told, go away, people are not picking my phone calls. Mm. Now I can wake up today and I decide, look, I'm thinking of implementing this new thing in the academy that sounds great. Yeah. I don't have to go to anyone. Mm -hmm. I do it, my kids benefit, yeah. the society benefits. So yeah. having that autonomy and, uh, and uh, privi uh, being able to do it myself. Yeah, mm. wow, lovely. Um, thank you for hosting, Dr. Boyd, very informative. Thanks yes. a lot, uh, Jeanette Cheroteach as well, very informative. Somebody is still talking his age. <laughs> we have our to encourage investments or discourage them. Yeah. But there you're right. You know, it's also like I've had entrepreneurs seated here as well. Yeah. And some, some of the, 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 the bodies that regulate even SMEs in this country, yes, yes. They're, they're sort of a bit coming out as a blockage yeah. from even the taxes introduced in between a pandemic and all yes, those kind of things. Yes. And you wonder, hey, mm. we, we are barely trying to survive and breathe. Exactly. Come on, help us. Exactly. And so. For all the legislators who are watching, please, you need to call the people in the sports sector as well, yes. you know, talk to Dr. Boyd, yes. he will point at you yeah. what's happening in that act and what needs to be amended as well. Exactly, exactly. Wow. We, so we, I just wanted to close, I know this is a business show, so 
What is? Go ahead. We still have a minute or so. Yes. Yeah. So in terms of the economic, uh, in economic impact that it will have on Kenya. Yes. What is the way forward? What's the way forward? So yeah. initially, as I've heard many people talk about public-private partnerships. Yeah. Honestly speaking, I was initially for that, but now. I'm actually thinking that for us to actually make the hugest impact in sports in Kenya, we need to privatize and professionalize sports, those two things. Wow. Privatize and professionalize sports. Mm -hmm. If you look at the most successful companies in Kenya, most of them are privately owned, mm -hmm. privately run, yeah. of course regulated by the ministry, which is okay. We are okay being regulated by the ministry and even the Sports Act if they amend. Yeah. And being able to create true revenue mm -hmm. through being, uh, so privatization and, and, and professionalization wow. is what needs to be done. Lovely, and uh, and I really hope because I think there's a desire for a lot of this to happen. Yes, because we have institutions that are just dying. Yes, uh, simply because the government just needs to lose a little bit so that at least they exactly. can allow these partnerships to happen. Exactly. Wow. Let me get to the concluding remarks. Thanks a lot, guys, for all the comments. I may not be able to even uh, read them all, but uh, let me just pick in uh, the last bit of it before we come okay. to the closing. Okay. Um, Okay, you've told us about your satisfying moment, and uh, um, I, I really wanted to ask about me personally and see yes. whether I can, maybe this will happen on the sidelines. Yes. So, but what would be now your part in short? I mean, you're talking to parents, first of all. Yes. Uh, and by the way, before we even get there, how do people reach next gen? If maybe I have a son, four year old, five yes. year old, I'm like, hmm. Yes. Holiday. Yes. What do I do? What exactly. about? But is it just on holidays or are you still ongoing? We're ongoing through the terms. Through, through the terms. Yeah. So in fact, what I'll do, I'll give you our official phone number. Okay. So quickly, so and now on, on social media, you can just find us uh, at Next Gen Multi Sport Academy. Next Gen Multi Sport Academy. Yes. Okay. And then uh, our official phone number, which I'll give you guys yeah. just, just now, yeah. is you can reach us on. Um, so actually, by the way, yes. you're on Facebook as well? Yes, on Facebook, Instagram, Instagram Twitter, uh -huh. okay. Next Gen Multi Sport Academy. Okay, so and you have the number now? Yeah, the number is 0758. 0758. 270. 270. 583. 583. And if they want to reach me, they can reach me on 0706. 0706. 807. 807. 807. 219. 219. And that's for the leg people who actually want to change. If people, the people who are really interested in changing sports yeah. can contact me on that number. So I'll, I'll ask you to say that number again okay. because maybe somebody just missed the digit. Yes. Just say it again. 07 mm -hmm. 06 06 807 807 219. 219. Yes, and. Excellent. Thanks yeah. a lot for that. But now, let, let, let me get to your parting shot. And for parents, yes. Uh, of course, now they can reach you. Yes. Go to the Facebook page. Yes. Once they DM you, yes. you'll be able to exactly. revert to them, is it? But from this entire conversation and looking at the economic impact we can have on all this, yes. what will be your parting shot? And, and I don't know who you're addressing. Maybe you're addressing the people who would make decisions here. But go so, ahead. <laughs> So there's a famous saying that Nelson Mandela said. Mm -hmm. So this, he said sports has the potential to change mm -hmm. the world or the country. Yeah. It, has, it has the potential to speak the language the youth yeah. can understand. Yeah. So let's use sports yeah. to change our nation. Yeah. Let's use it to change both personal health yeah. Yeah. and economic Right. status of the country wow. and it can be done single-handedly mm -hmm. or oh, not single-handedly i think i've pushed it a bit <laughs> it can be assisted yes. through sports absolutely yeah and my goodness how much money will the government save with this is so it? much i want to give you a gift eh? yes uh, so uh, okay. because of uh, courtesy of melvin's i don't know uh, you said you enjoyed what the mint yes i like the green tea the mint the green tea mint right it actually has a lot of antioxidants Oh, that's why. Polyphenols. And you guy, you need to tell me these secrets. Yeah. No. <laughs> and then it also suppresses <laughs> appetite a bit. Okay. So it's it's quite a good. In fact, I, I when, whenever I normally do a bit of fasting. So yeah. when I'm fasting, I normally have actually this brand, yeah. Melvin's Green Tea. Okay. And it helps suppress my appetite during the morning period. Wow. Yeah. And Mel it speeds up my me metabolism, so it's it's quite good. That's lovely. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Okay. So enjoy it. Yes. Um, I know you came with your son. Yes. He's somewhere, somewhere at the back, somewhere yeah. there. Yeah. But uh, shout out to him. Let him enjoy that as well. Thank you. And so he was much. actually dressed in the next gen uni as well. Yes. Is it? Yes. So when am I getting my jersey soon? Eh? Soon. By by Monday you'll have it. <laughs> by Monday, by Monday I'll have it. it right. Yes. Excellent. Thanks a lot for coming. Thank you, Doctor Boyd. Thank you, you know, so much. It's just been an honor to host you here. 
and to really learn that there is a whole economic value exactly. if we just really looked inwards through sports exactly. and just through getting well. Exactly. Know? Yeah, there you have it. Uh, and um, such an amazing conversation with Dr. Boyd. And uh, by the way, Master, you're fairly young. Yes. A lot of doctors yeah. have some gray hair. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Those are my just thoughts. Yeah. And so thanks a lot uh, for really tuning in yeah. uh, to Be Stokes. And we really look forward to keep enlightening you more on, uh, you know, just the entire matters business Thank from you. the sports to everything else. So thanks for tuning in to the number one online business show. Bye-bye for now. Keep working. Bye-bye. Thank you.